Hello and welcome to International Women's Day live from Ballyferma College. My name is Anya Gillen and I'm a student of the media department studying radio. Today's show is brought to you by our radio, art and television production students. Thank you for joining us, both those of you here at BCFE and those of you who are joining us virtually. Today we are delighted to be joined by some of our graduates who are very successful and working in the media. Our host of the day is Claire Darmody. Claire is a senior producer of News Talks, The Pat Kenny Show, and is also the founder of Prestige Media. Alongside Claire, we have broadcaster Trishana Archer, Emer McCormack of Be Different Media, and Becca Rice of Egg Post Productions. Together they will be discussing what life is like in the Irish media and will also be sharing their experiences of how they got to where they are today. They may even have some helpful advice for those of you who are on the same path. I'm delighted to hand you over to the Women of the Hour. for joining us here today uh, to help us celebrate International Women's Day. You're very welcome and thank you for the patience while we got everything organised. Um, I'm going to welcome my panel and thank you for joining us ladies. I have Emer McCormack, founder, of Be D- founder and managing director of Be Different Marketing, Trishana Archer, TV and radio presenter and Becca Rice, a visual effects coordinator with Egg Post Productions. You're all very welcome ladies. Thank you very thank much. You. Um, so I thought because um, we're all BCFE graduates, we kick off our chat by talking a little bit about what we did when we were here in the college. As you can imagine, varying different times. I've, I was at the longest for me. Um, but before we get into that, can I just say um, that Ashing took the four of us on a tour before uh, we, we joined you guys. And my God, has the place had a makeover since I was here. <laughs> um, and certainly since some of the rest of us are here. So we got to see the TV studio, obviously, in this, which is fabulous. Um, the nursery, the, the, the nursing, um, we thought it was a real person in the bed, by the way. Um, <laughs> the nursing facilities, the childcare facilities, um, the radio studio is a little bit similar to when we were here, but I think there's probably some more work to be done there. And the V, the V or, or and the, the gaming place is absolutely amazing. Sergio mm. showed us, um, I'm not allowed to say toys, but some of his very special stuff that they do in there. So it's just fantastic to be back. Um, and we're very jealous of the facilities that you have here now, and I hope that you appreciate them and you're utilising them, which I'm sure you are. Um, so yes, back to this fantastic panel I'm joined by. And Emer, we might start with you, if that's okay. No problem. Um, just to tell everyone what it was that you did in Ballyfermot when you were studying here, and then just why it was so special in your memories. Yeah, Ballyfermot. Uh, I have such fond memories. So yeah. We were just reminiscing before we came up here to the stage. And above all the other institutes that I went to, and I went to a few because, you know, <laughs> um, super well educated, not really. But Ballyfermot actually was my fondest memory because it's where I learned the most. Um, I'd done a diploma in uh, radio production, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, and then I went on to do the degree here, uh, the degree in uh, media production and management, uh, which I know y- yourself done as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, such fond memories of uh, doing radio here. Uh, and again, you know, earlier on we were speaking, it's, those skills that I learned here were so practical that when I went out into the, the workforce and even in my own business now, 11 years on, having a marketing agency, I use those skills every single day. And I, I often re- remind myself, I stop myself sometimes on the track, in tracks and I'm like, oh my God, like I learned how to write this radio script or I learned how to you know, uh, picture something for a TV ad and, and so on. So all of those skills, Still That's remind me like to this so day. So you use day to day. Yeah, for sure. Here, all those yeah. Years, not all those years ago. Some years ago. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but like. But that's great to know? hear, you know. Yeah, I know it is. And, you know, and, and I learned more as well because I had the foundation. So, for example, back in the day, we had Cool Edit. <laughs> Su- super cool, which is now <laughs> Adobe Edition. And, uh, you know, learning how to use that software learned, uh, taught me how to use Premiere Pro when it comes to video editing. Yeah. Then I invested in camera rigs, lighting, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I knew all of that and I know all of that because of what I've done here in Ballyfermot. Mm. So those foundations, I think, are, are, are just have stood to me all these years on now. It's not that many years on now, but a few <laughs> years on. 
So yeah. Well, before we move on, um, perhaps you can give us the memory that you were sharing with me earlier, actually, from our when we socialized around here. The yeah. Canteen. So uh, Bally Farm, it always reminds me of like the smoking area. Sorry, ma'am. Um, <laughs> we the, the square in the canteen. Uh, we used to, you know, frequent that from time to time, hiding from the likes of Christine up there, um, John, uh, Dr. Dennis Murray. Dennis. Uh, you know, anybody who would give us any sort of a look if we were late for class, we would be hanging out there. So if we're found uh, or if we're found missing, we definitely would be there. And I remember one fond memory uh, is the, the canteen ladies, which I think they are just the bomb diggity diggity bomb. Absolutely. <laughs> and they saved me so much, so many times for, from starvation. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> clearly they've done a good job. but. Um, the, the, the most funny part of all of that was I used to get my grant. Uh, I'm from the country and we used to get grants, <laughs> which I'm sure you can still get grants to this day. But uh, I used to get my grant until the Thursday. So I'd be going up to the canteen ladies on a Monday. And I'd be like, any chance? And they used to give me a, a sandwich. No worries, Emer. Pay me on the Thursday. So on the Thursday, I used to go in, paying back my juice. <laughs> <laughs> paying back my juice to the canteen ladies. So. Uh, yeah, I'll never forget yeah. that. The, the generosity, you know, the generosity mm. of, of the local people of Ballyfermot uh, and even outside of the college was just uh, quite remarkable. But uh, I, you know, big up to my homies in the canteen because <laughs> they saved me many as a time. Lovely. Thank you so much, Emer, for sharing. And Shoshana, we'll ask you now, I think I could probably gather with your title, TV and radio presenter, what you did, but you might fill us in anyway. Um, so I did uh, journalism first. So I did okay. print journalism and then kind of figured all oh, that writing wasn't for me. So I needed to, <laughs> I, I always wanted to be a broadcaster so uh, I moved then to general media which involved communications television a bit of radio as well and much like you I remember making programs like I remember making my first radio program and that was when I discovered that like I really like doing this yeah. I enjoy being behind the mic you know we got to put together our whole script you know being from producer seeing a program being made from start to scratch and um, and it was just one of those experiences that really kind of snowballed and I really wanted to become a radio presenter after that and television as well but I remember being in the studios and just getting that first hand experience and also being around like-minded folks as well that were all doing the same thing that were all trying to reach the same goal you kind of felt supported you know you felt like all right I'm in the right place and this is this is a found great learning tribe. exactly yeah. found my tribe yeah. so it was great being here and it also built my confidence behind the mic and in front of it as well which so you do a very good it. job we've all Thank seen you. on television and heard you on the radio thanks so, well so done. much and becca the most recent past pupil i suppose is fair to say isn't it yeah so do you want to tell us what you did when you were stood in here a minute ago <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also what your memories are from here yeah i did the plc course um first um in film and did digital film and TV and then I went on to do the HND in film production and I, I learned skills that I definitely would take in to work with me every day. Yeah. Yeah. I found it really, really helpful. And I also work with a lot of people that were in my course. Okay. Yeah. So it's a nice community. It's like I'm still in college. But yeah. in the real world. Yeah. yeah. Just a lot of older people. And even listening to you guys saying some of the courses, like I know certainly when I was here and Emer Watson long after me really, that a lot of them just weren't here. And then, um, and a big shout out to Ashling who took us on that tour earlier and the beautiful photography studio. Mm -hmm. um, Emer does a lot of photography for her work. I, I don't have a clue about photography, but it's fab. And it's great to see it moving that direction. It most certainly is on the content creation mm. side of it, because that's where everything's yeah. moving towards exactly. now. You know, it's less polished, yeah. more, um, I suppose, immersive. Yeah. You know, so it's great to see Body Farm have been really innovative in this area, yeah. area and pushing it on, you know. They're really catching up, which is amazing. Like they were innovative when we were here and they mm. obviously still are and they're just always developing courses. So when I was in Body Farm, it, it might have been the, the course you did. It was called BJS at the time. It's it's maybe me, Deanna or me. I know I'm old. You know? <laughs> when I, I did it was two it. years <laughs> and then we were so bright they changed into one year after we left. But that was the one where you could do print media and radio and mm. TV and then you had to choose. And we were just talking earlier. I really struggled between radio and TV at the time. Connor taught me as well um, and I, I really struggled about which but I, I kind of thought the producing and broadcasting was for me rather than the technical element so I did radio then um, with Bernard and one of my colleagues is in the audience very supportive today and he did it with me and then we did the media management degree with Dennis um, and I think 
I don't think any of my um, any of anyone I know who went to college had as many lecturers telling them this is a terrible industry to go into. You're not going to get work. Yeah. You'll yeah. never. You'll be always poor, <laughs> and uh, you're mad to be in this. And they told us that consistently, which I thought was actually great that we stuck with it. Um, but also it was so honest, and I I think that was that was a part of the memory. But exactly as you guys say, f finding your tribe. Like I still have friends that I made here. Mm. Um, but the practical aspect of the courses here just weren't really anywhere else at the time. No, they weren't. And uh, I think even to, to today, in today's world, you'll, you'll actually struggle to yeah. find something as learning as you're doing yeah. uh, that's out there. You can go off and you can do a couple of months course and you learn bits and bobs. Mm. But I think that the start and the trajectory of learning is, is phenomenal here in Ballyfermot and always has been. And I think that's a really unique selling point for the actual institution as a whole. Mm. Um, and, and I think as well, you know, like radio is changing. Yeah. We know that radio is changing. TV is changing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's becoming more personality driven, like the influencers uh, and so on that are, are taking our goddamn jobs. <laughs> but they, they're, taking, they're taking away that, uh, when I say they're taking away, I, I'll, I'll qualify that in a moment. But yeah. what I'm saying is you, you have to learn the practicalities and you have to learn the doing here. And that is your foundation. Where you go forward beyond that is up to you as an individual. You know, you're not going to have, uh, you know, your lecturers holding your hand as you leave Ballyfermot and getting you a job in RT or wherever and any other various different organisation. You have to stand out from the crowd. Mm. So when you're up against the likes of the creator stroke influencer genre, you can still be on the same level, but it's up to you to find what is your unique selling mm. point mm -hmm. and then developing on from that so radio has changed ever so slightly since we went to college here but that doesn't mean that it, it, you know it's fundamentally changed because you have the foundations better than anybody else that is next to you Absolutely. yeah and i think like it, there was other traditional university courses developed around the time i was here and afterwards but while they have practical components i just don't think they really put it into place the way the lecturers do here they really train you for your job really here mm. Mm. um but the final one i want to mention that i thought driving over here is the level of law training we got, certainly in my course. Yes. I don't know, like a lot of my job day to day is just trying not to get sued. Like that is the truth <laughs> of it. I know it seems funny to you. It's not funny when you're in there. Um, but we actually had a really good basis. We had a lot of different law teachers for whatever reason, um, or lecturers during my time. But that was another really solid basis that like you have to have if you're going yeah. into a job. So I thought that was another one worth a mention. Anyway, mm. we could obviously reminisce on our body from memories all day and they are all positive ones or we wouldn't be back today um but i think given it's international women's day and that's what we're here to talk about and we're all women in the media we thought it might be nice to have a discussion about women in media where they are now in relation to our, our roles and also where they're going so i suppose we'll get everyone just to say what they do today as in your day-to-day -day role and how you feel women in media are now and where it needs to go um and we can chat about that becca we might start with you but before i let you come in is it okay to ask you to tell the audience who i'm sure know about your great news that you got yesterday morning, midnight the night before from IFTA? Yeah, well, we got a nomination from IFTA yesterday for the VFX that we did on the movie The Woman King that we worked on in the summer. So, yeah, we got it. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Like, come on. She left about a minute ago. She looks like this and she just got an IFTA nomination. We just all leave. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. That's so exciting, Becca, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're all so delighted the next. So, yeah. So hopefully we'll all get to go. And I think that, the, the, you know, the film industry in Ireland is really coming into its own at the moment. I yeah, do. I definitely. think, you know, just to look at the Oscar noms and to see talent like yours getting nods at the IFTAs, it's so exciting. So honestly, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, but you want to fill us in a little bit about what your day to day job is and how you feel about women in media? Yes. Yeah, so um, I work at Egg VFX as a production coordinator. And so my day to day is managing artists, making sure we deliver the project within time, schedule and budget kind of thing. Um, so it's a lot of, where's this, getting needed now kind of thing. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, managing mainly a group of artists. And yeah. And how do you feel about the representation of women as it is now? I know you're probably only a couple of years in that job, are you? Um, yeah, so I started last February. Yeah. So just a year, but when I started, it was um, a company of five, and now we're a company of 50 plus. Wow. wow. Um, so yeah, I, I started, it, it was actually an advantage to start. Um, the ground level, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So when I started, there was one woman, four men, and now the ratio is still kind of the same. Mm. Um, but it's good because I was in there first, so like when people come in and like managing men, 
is a bit more <laughs> <laughs> difficult, uh, uh, especially because of my age and my gender, whatever they can. It's easy to talk down to me, mm. but since I was there from the start, I find it easier to have like a an in before them kind of thing. Mm. So I want an advantage. I was lucky. And in relation to the industry that you work in, like where do you think we we need to get to when it comes to women in that I role? I think we need to see more women in bigger roles, like director, executive producer. I don't think there's enough of that in Ireland or in the world yet. But um, I think, yeah, reshaping the mould is definitely where we need to go forward. Yeah. Well, if anyone's going to do it, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Listen, we'll, do, we'll, we'll have a shot again at the end, but maybe just um, that same question to, to you, Trishana, from where, like what you do day to day, which is mm. a lot. I know you do lots of different uh, roles, oh. which a lot of us do, I know. Um, and then from a women in media point of view. Uh, for me at the moment, it's about freelancing. So I'm doing a lot of radio, a lot of TV. Um, I am a regular panelist on VMTV, also on RTE as well. I was on the Today Show. I presented with them as well. I'm a voiceover artist. So there's a lot of scripts being, you know, um, got every day. And so I'm behind my studio. I have a little purpose-built studio in my house where wow. I'm, you know, doing my VOs. Um, I'm the station voice for iRadio. So there's a lot of scripts coming in at a time and uh, mostly being a panelist at the moment i was on news talk as well um, most recently so it's literally being all over the place and having my hands in all the pies but it's brilliant it really is it just offers me that bit of variety you know i think um, freelancing like that is a huge part of media like yeah. I think that's something that like um, you're a jack of all trades which is brilliant because you can turn your hand to stuff, but it does make you very busy, doesn't it? Very busy, and yeah. sometimes you do find you're turning down things. And you hate to do that, don't hate you? To do it. Hate to do it, hate saying no. And that's yeah. the thing as well, when you're in media, you know, don't say no to anything. You have to accept every single job you have, or you get offered. But for me, I am I feel lucky enough to say that, you know, I can say no to certain things. And yeah, yeah I, it's just about constantly keeping yourself <laughs> out there, especially as you know now with social media as well. I had a podcast, so there was a lot of, you know, Making Beamer videos. Said, this is the, you're dealing with loads of different people, content creating nonstop, yeah. All the time, all the time. When it comes to women <coughs> in media, though, I think we are in such a fantastic place. I remember when I first started um, being told that we don't like hearing female voices on air. We were talking about this earlier. And there was a, a male manager that approached me and said that, he was like, listen, and I was just starting out at the time. And I remember him saying, you know, I don't think, just so you know, the stats out there say that we don't really like hearing female voices. So if you're not received very well, don't feel too bad about it. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm, I'm starting out here. Don't, you know, don't start me out like this. I, I don't want to feel like, you know, my back's up against the wall or that I might not be able to reach an audience. Um, and I remember just thinking, well, if they don't like hearing female voices, I like hearing female voices. I've heard a lot of female voices on radio, not as much as we have today, yeah. but I like hearing it. So that definitely there are other women who are in the same position as me. And uh, it, I made it drive me. I made it be the driver to keep going and to keep wanting to make good radio. I was on beat for 10 years on breakfast radio where it's, you know, a lot of kind of personality radio. And I, I really kind of, um, I wanted to prove myself and prove that women can do it, you know? And um, I think we are in a much better place than we were 10 years ago. I think if we look at say, 98 FM, there's Susan Kane, you know, we have um, on FM 104 now, we have the likes of Tara Murray, we have Louise Tig, you know, on 2FM, there are, you know, two female presenters, which I remember hearing as well at the time, you can't have two females together. People just don't like the sound of two female yeah, voices. Just, like, just to say, because I think we all experienced this at the time, I mm. hope to God no one is, is feeding you this absolute bullshit now, mm. but th there was no stats, there is no stats. That was based on absolute nothing, and it was sold to me as well. But I just just want to interject there because mm. to someone to actually say statistics, statistics never showed that. I was told women didn't like women on air. But I think we've moved on. But it's you heard that too, Eamon, didn't oh you? Oh yeah, remember? for sure. That was yeah. definitely yeah. a story yeah. being rolled out from absolutely nowhere. Yeah, yeah, or you had to tone it down. Oh yeah. Tone Another thing down. was about your voice. Yeah. yeah. Remember the voice training? I don't know if you if you still <laughs> do that here in Valley Fairmont. Oh, what was that lovely lady's name that you used to do it? Was lovely, it Anna? Are you genuinely lovely? Is it you think? No, not Brendan. Oh, before Brenda. 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 Oh. Brenda. Yeah, probably Brenda. only Dennis probably. Yeah, Brenda Hartnett. Brenda That's Hartnett. That's it, Brenda Hartnett. Mm. What tell me fabulous lady. To read poetry because it was a really good way to um, yeah. just make your voice sound. Yeah. yeah. But uh, now she was 
she was a taskmaster. She was excellent oh, yeah. in what she'd done, you know. We know not turning up to class then. Absolutely <laughs> not. You'd be hoofed out of it. Oh. Um, but what's really interesting about that is, is that, you know, back in the to back in the day, you were told, okay, bring your tone down. Mm speak clearly do all of these various different things it was because a craft in a way when you're being taught that way right it is but it was it was done in a little way derogatory too where it was yeah. kind of orchestrated Putting so that you wouldn't place. have a high-pitched voice now yeah. i don't have a high-pitched voice I, myself yeah but there are people that do and they were always told well take it down a notch take mm -hmm. it down a notch because people don't want to listen to that but I think you're kind of told to tone it down in lots of ways as a woman, you know? Oh, for so sure. So true. You know, it's like the whole, um, and not to get off the topic, but the word shrill is only ever used about women. It's never used about men, right? Mm. Mm. Or um, excitable. That was the next one. You're a bit too excitable. Tone it down. You're like, what? Can Sorry? I ask you, by the way, uh, that gentleman who told you that, mm. is he still somebody that's working in the industry? He is still working in Have the industry. Have he changed his view, do you think, having seen the progression? Definitely. Um, I, I had remember no choice or adapted? I think had no choice. Okay. <laughs> had no choice, so we had to adapt. Probably because of Shoshana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to stay. <laughs> I love it. Mm. So maybe just quickly about your role, Emer, because then we can chat about where we think it should go. But yeah, I, I spend most of my time running from the revenue commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't we all? Um, yeah. So I, I suppose I, I work in the area of marketing. Um, I, I have a lot of experience uh, over the years from raising millions of euro um, wow. and, and dollars in uh, United States boardrooms to working in this type of area in terms of like scripting various different things, designing TV um, ads, doing all of that kind of day to day uh, stuff. Within the marketing field, there are lots of women, like it's yeah. dominated with women. Yeah. But in boardrooms and the people who I would be speak speaking with are full of men. Mm -hmm. It's very, very unusual. Maybe more so now, you might get one or two dotted away. And that's also across not only in just what I do in my professional day-to-day -day life, but also outside of that in my area of sport. If you look at all of those boards and people who you're trying to change opinions and trying to change ways and trying to move forward, a lot of the decisions are in the hands of predominantly men. Yeah. You know, we should have uh, some type of quota. Now, I don't believe in quota for mm. the sake of having a quota, by the way. It has to be on the merits. So I, I would view personally myself as that men and, and women are equal. They bring, uh, as individuals, they bring something great to the table. Mm. And I don't think gender, just because you know, uh, you're know you female, that you automatically should sit on this board. I don't think that's right either. But I do think representation based upon... Uh, the need for more inclusion. Exactly, need yeah. for more inclusion and also expertise. Yeah. You know, when you have great minds around a table, you create great things, yeah. irrespective of status within the company. And uh, I think that's really, really interesting. But it is slightly changing, but it's not. I, at the top, mm. when you're dealing with, you know, big multinational companies, it hasn't changed. Mm. It might have a little bit pivoted ever so slightly, but it hasn't changed. In the day-to-day -day working life, it, 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 I've noticed that it has changed. Yeah. So it maybe it's slower to get to that level, um, but we yeah. need. A, we, there's a good bit of work to do, really. But I remember, I remember not only just the fact that as a female, but I remember being put back in my box many times. Oh. Imagine that. <laughs> 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 put back in my box because of my age, mm. right? When I because I was 30 years of age when I set up my own marketing agency. Prior to that, I had done a lot of things in business, not because of I come from that background. It's because I actually found it interesting and I excelled in that area. But I was told, who does she think she is? Mm. By women or men? Predominantly men and women. Mm. And women, to be fair, and women, but predominantly men. Is that begrudgery rather than gender? I Perhaps wonder, so. or a bit of both, Perhaps maybe. Perhaps so, or but an, also. An ageism. I think ageism, Actually, as yeah. age, ageism as well. I remember yeah. when I was a marketing director for on behalf of a company at the age of 26, 27, and I remember being told, you have zero experience. Now, they're probably right, to be fair. <laughs> but I knew I, what I was doing was good and I was contributing to the organization mm. and I had no questions as regards that. But to be told and to be put down like that, mm. it stops you in your tracks. I remember when I, when I started first producing, I was only 23. Um, I stayed there for five years. Couldn't get rid of me. And uh, people like that, they saw me and they saw this blonde thing in their early 20s being a producer of a mid morning show. Now, I didn't ever let it bother me and it didn't take long for them to realise I knew what I was at. But it was definitely, I felt people assumed because I was younger that I didn't know. And it's interesting because uh, my job is, uh, my, my main job as senior producer in News Talk, I produced the Pat Kenny show. And 
like we're obsessed in radio with getting a younger audience. We just like yeah. everyone's obsessed with getting a younger audience. Recently, we were told we've more women and more young people, but we're losing some of the middle-aged men. I thought, well, that's that's probably okay, isn't it? But anyway, no, we have to work on that as well. <laughs> well, we had too many of them. That was the problem. But anyway, um, it, we 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 look for a younger audience. But I'm not sure we always engage with them or ask them what they think. And I think there is still a little bit of dismissiveness about younger people, certainly in the corporate world, I'd imagine. Oh, for sure. And you need to even like when I'm thinking about like do marketing tactics. I'm not marketing per se at what I have in front of me now. Yeah, of course. Because those, and have. not to be flippant about it, but they're going to die. They're in the bank. Right? <laughs> so, but it's true, right? Because and I need to become very innovating. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did try and ask me to listen to news talk, didn't you? I'm only joking. Um, I listen all the time. Um, but no, like genuinely, it is very much... The new client, the, the new, new listener, the, the new, new. You yeah. need to be thinking about what is coming down the track. Okay, so if I have a 40-year-old listenership, or if I have a 40-year-old audience that they're consuming my media that I am putting out there, what are we going to do for the 20s to 40s? Yeah. Mm. What are we going to do to bridge the gap between those guys growing up? Because we face a huge issue right now, especially within radio. Our issue that we face is that people are turning to podcasts. They're turning to other types of media. They're consuming a whole load of stuff on YouTube and stuff like that. So how do you combat that? How do you make that interesting for that audience? And I think there is a little bit of arrogance towards not bringing the audience with you um, in, in radio in particular, but across the media. You know, and, uh, if you think about it, even in politics, mm. we're facing a general election probably the next year, who knows, six months, or six maybe weeks. maybe November, by the sounds of things. We don't even, know. Yeah, you don't know. So if we think about that, so it's predominantly in Ireland, we have an older age profile that is voting. And the younger profile doesn't tend to be as forecoming in terms of registering to vote and going out and vote. But if I was a political party, I would be thinking about that now. Yeah. I would be saying, well, how can I bridge and communicate a different message to that audience so that they grow with me? I don't think and like hopefully when I look back at this and be like, she was so right. <laughs> but I don't think that the political landscape will be where it is right now when the next general election arrives. But I mean, like a lot of you might be too um, young to remember or maybe weren't engaged at the time, but like there was no Social Democrats, there was no independence, there was no anything. That great election where dynasties fell because the public just really that election where, where so many people lost their seats and people like Mick Wallace and Richard Boyd Barrett and whatever your views, they changed the landscape of the doll and they put an opposition there that wasn't there previously, which kind of made people have to take a bit of account. And I think the referendums, we saw a young vote decide yeah. to come home to register yeah. when it came to repeal and marriage ref. So it's there, but how do you yeah. put it into place, you know? And I think that's probably a challenge. Like I, I look after TY students sometimes in news talk and we tell them, everyone who comes into lecture, pack any, whoever, and they say, I know you don't do Facebook. And they go, we do do Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Jesus, why do we never ask them? We just tell them, what do you do? You know, and they, yeah. they're, they're only transitioners, but they're the future audience, as you yeah. said, you know. Um, I know we're nearly out of time. Just in relation to where I come from, from a radio point of view, where I think we need to move towards, um, and I had that experience of the women not being wanted on radio or listened to, but that's changing. Mm -hmm. But I think getting more contributors on air, more women, because we do kind of try and have a quota in News Talk where we look for at least 40% on the air. And it's difficult, depending on the program, obviously. And I don't know if you're familiar with the schedule, but the kind of caller show in the middle of the day might be easier to get more women, the home show, but the business show, not so much. So that's a challenge we have. I don't know if you feel that the same in, in Beef, but like it's hard to get female economists, engineers, um, you know, available. And that's kind of a challenge. That and topics being seen as female. I think reaching out where on social media is definitely where everything is like supposedly TikTok now is where the younger audience is and I think if we aim to kind of reach out to kind of those social stratosphere then we'll be able to get more females mm. on air I think um, the likes of TikTok the likes of Facebook as you're saying the likes of Instagram some of the influencers as well are great at speaking and are great at you know discussing these topics but we're not reaching out to them there mm. you know I think as a producer yourself you might know how do I how do I reach them? I think send a message on social media to be like, mm. hey, you know, people are out there, put up a status, mm. like call them. They are definitely there. But yeah, I think no, social we're, media we're is we're the way to go. We're working on it, and like, yeah. it's, but it's hard, and it, mm. like it's probably different in talk radio as well, depending on what you're doing. But we're working on, it. and I know that is where you probably get them. I know mm. my sister 
Um, and I know, like, sorry, International Women's Day is a fabulous uh, day and it's great for us all to be here, but she's the editor of Silicon Republic, so she works a lot in tech. And she said to me, like, the problem is everyone gets in touch to say, we've got this great woman in tech to talk to for International Women's Day. It's like, where are we all year, though? Like, why are people only giving you those? Now, we need to find them. But also, if companies are putting these people forward for one day a year, why are they not putting them forward for other times? Mm. Yeah, but I think there is an onus on the media industry oh, as totally well to, find to them. actually do something about it. To because find them, yeah. if it took Margaret E. Ward to set up Women on Air, going back probably maybe more than 10 years ago, yeah. why did it take an independent person in order to create that um, little organisation that women could f form part of a list that could talk about particular subjects mm. uh, and then with their phone numbers attached and then that was given to radio producers. To me, I think that's lazy. Mm. So I think that as a as a as a as media, mm -hmm. we should come together and brainstorm a way to be able to bridge that gap. Okay. To bridge across various different things, gender equality, all of these different things, and women in media. You know, so I think that is the is the solution here. Instead of waiting for somebody to do it. Do no, it. and sorry, mm -hmm. when I said news talker looking for quota, that's what I mean. We've been working for the last three years on trying to find women that are not used, good performers, chat to them, see if they're available to put them into the database that when you have 10 minutes to get a topic yeah. and on the air, you do it. Yeah. And, and it's a work in progress, but I still think there's a ways to go in that, yeah, in getting sure. more representative on, on air as contributors. There's definitely more broadcasters, but there's not enough. Yeah. There's more women in leadership roles, there's not enough in media. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably the big challenge for us. We probably have to move on now. Um, it might be worth saying just as well, by the way, that I, I'm aware it's International Women's Day and I think probably you'll all agree that we are incredibly privileged to be here talking about media. Yeah. Um, you know, it, like globally, there's obviously huge issues around the world. If you look at women in Syria, Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, like every there's people who want to go to college. So just to say it's lovely to be here, but obviously we're very privileged. And I think it's worth yeah. noting that today, sure. particularly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so finally, um, and I know probably I'm being wrapped here, but I'll, I'll let everyone quickly say we talked about asking people what you wish you knew when you're in college that you know now. But I think what you know is what you know when you leave college and the rest is the journey, which you guys have absolutely demonstrated. So what would your Trishawn, I suppose we'll start with you. What would your main tips or takeaways for the audience be today? I think don't sweat the small stuff. That is something I live by every single day. And it's, it's something I wish I took more seriously when I was in college. I would overthink, and I do think rumination can be the killer of dreams. You think about it, you think about it, some of those little mistakes you've made. Oh my gosh, are people gonna remember this? Like I remember um, my first time being on Virgin Media and I had to do a feature. And in that feature, I don't know what happened. I it, just completely blanked. And yeah, oh yeah, God, live TV, air. live TV, and I drew a blank and I had all my notes there. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, this is going to be the end of my career. Nobody is ever <laughs> going to call me again. Nobody's going to want to see me. And I remember just thinking like this is this is so bad. I, I spent so much time beating myself up about that moment that I kind of missed out on opportunities because I was I spent so much time just thinking about it. And I wish I could look back at that you know me and go listen be grand. mistakes <laughs> it be grand. Be grand. nobody is thinking about that time in 2011 that you didn't say <laughs> you know something on air or you missed one line so i would say just believe in yourself but believe in yourself enough that even if you make a mistake even if there is something small we're all human just pick yourself back up don't think about it too much learn your lesson from that mistake and just move it along keep moving but don't say no to opportunities yeah. because you think you may have messed up so much and one of the things i always beat myself up about, about um in that situation is they asked me at the end of it to come back to say um the canteen area and you know have a chat with everyone and i was so Asked embarrassed the whole team yeah oh, gosh i was so embarrassed <laughs> though that i was like no i need to go home and i actually ran out of there and i thought there were people there that i could have you opportunities. know opportunities and there were people there who i could have spoken to that may have you know calmed me down or explained the situation that these things happen but I ran away from it and I ran so fast, <laughs> you know, and I did, did not look back, back towards it, though, because you still got loads of work after that. Obviously. It took time to kind of yeah, get your, your yeah, confidence, back. my confidence back and to kind of realize that, yeah, mistakes do happen. Yeah. And I learned my lesson from it. Look down at your cards if you have to, you know, the, it's there for a reason. And don't feel that much pressure. Try to live in the moment. It's something as well. I always say, in life, don't think, yeah, in life, good, good, yeah you know, life don't think so much about what the next thing is going to be. And I think that's what happened that Be day. Present. My brain was 
just moving so fast that I was just, you know, not being in the moment. So don't sweat the small stuff, forget about it, move on, learn your lesson from those hard mistakes and life will be okay, you know? Thank you, that's lovely, Shoshana. Yeah. Um, Becca, what about you? What's your inspiring, uh, if the nominee, I mean, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> um, I would say, yeah, like Tishwana said, um, take every opportunity that comes your way, definitely. Um, and also being young and in college, you have like the world your oyster, basically. And yeah. um, I'd say work on your portfolio as well as getting the experience because it's all well having a degree, but it's like putting the degree into play and if you can use it properly. Um, but yeah, and network a lot. That's what I would say. Yeah, like, yeah. What you, how do you give some examples of networking that you do? So, like, th like going to film festivals, you can be around like minded people. Animation Jingles coming up this March, so that'd be a great way to meet um, different people of the same like mind. And they have a studio day, so, like, studios come and recruit young people, especially to get you onto the team. Yeah. And don't be afraid to go over and tell people who you are and introduce yourself. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Becca. Yeah. Emer? I think back yourself. You're yeah. stronger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than you think you are. Yeah. And don't be afraid to change. So if you are, if, if you finish college and you, you end up going into a career and you think, oh my God, this really is not for me. That's okay. Leave it. Don't hang around. Leave. Life is too short. Life is too short. Time is ticking. When I was 20, I used to laugh at people in the 40s and say, <laughs> I'll never be 40. <laughs> <laughs> I she still I, isn't. I'm nearly there. <laughs> <laughs> the Botox is holding up well. Oh um, no, but seriously, is you know, you you are you're stronger. The, the mind is powerful, but make sure you're doing something that you like. Make sure that when you wake up in the morning, that when you're getting out of bed, that you're looking forward to the day ahead. If you have that knot in your stomach, where you're like, going, oh, jeez, I can't be dealing with this today. Change job because there are a myriad of different jobs out of there. And even if you don't want to, to, uh, to get a different job, you can create something. I know it's easier to said than done, mm. but I done it. <laughs> Everyone can do it. If I can do it anyway, you can do it. So back yourself and be brave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a be brave is actually mine as well. And I, I wonder if it's just because of where we are in our own careers, but I think definitely be brave. And that's about everything, not being afraid to go for a story, like if you're going into the industry I'm in. But you know, don't feel you have to follow the crowd, the Twitter echo chamber. Like don't be afraid to pitch in a meeting, even if you're an intern or you're a freelancer, people will see that. Um, and then work hard because it is hard work. Like it really is hard work. And it, it, it's really not for the money, this industry. The other thing I think that's um, amazing, like I also run a, a company, Prestige Media, where I do a lot of producing podcasts and I work with corporate clients and stuff. But what's so exciting, I think, about people now is you can create your own content in anything. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need a podcast studio, you don't need a radio station, and that's so exciting. So learn all those skills that I don't have about social media and all the things that I should have. Um, and, and just go after your own, um, your own, create your own role, as you said, yeah, because you could never definitely. do that before the way no. that you can now. But yeah, I think be brave is really the one. Be brave and work hard. And yeah. um, they'd be my words. I think we're, we're not only out of time, we're way beyond time. So thank you so much for your patience. We've absolutely loved being here. I have a couple of thank yous to do here. So the whole event, by the way, which is really collaborative, was, it was uh, produced by all the Valley Vermont College students. But I want to give a special mention to the art students. I'm sure you all know this. But this um, symbol was handmade by the art students. Class. So yes, absolutely. Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. And then the art department. And then the graphics, which everybody at home would have seen, I think, at the very beginning, or the titles were done by the visual effects people, which I assume are Becca's former colleagues. And sound by the <laughs> sound engineering students, the camera operations and lighting um, direction by the TV students. And I'm assuming my former TV teacher, Summer Connor Crosby. Um, and it's all been managed by media business management degree student, Kira McGovern, who gave me such support because I was really nervous coming here this morning. So Kira did a great job with helping me and so did Ashling. And I think that's, oh, sorry. And please put your hands together for my absolute powerhouse of panelists, Emer McGovern, <laughs> Trishana, Trishana Archer and Becca Wright. And Claire, oh my and gosh. Claire. <laughs> Amazing. And now before you all go back to class, we have to pass you over to Lavinia Kerwin, who's with the administration team, and she's going to give you a final word. Thanks, Claire. My name is Lavinia, and I'm a member of the admin team in BCFE. On behalf of Ballyfermot College, we would like to thank all those involved in the making of today's event, and to you at home for watching. 
If you would like further information on the courses offered in Ballyfermot College, please visit bcfe.ie. On behalf of our partners, ISA, Solace, City of Dublin ETB and of course Ballyfermot College, we would like to say thank you and goodbye.